fine quarterback, runs, but in the pass game, he's grown in that aspect as well. Set him up with a lot of confidence building, easy throws to get him in rhythm. He's playing super well right now. All right, we got some late breaking news right before kick. For more on that, Don, what's the latest on Chattanooga? Yeah, John, a change at quarterback. Starter Chase Artopias told me that he had been rehabbing his injured shoulder all week long, but just felt like he wasn't able to be effective with that today. So now, instead, we will see redshirt freshman Luke Schomburg from Huntsville, Alabama, get his first career start here in his home state. I talked to Chase about how he'll handle this moment. He pointed out how much he has trust in him and how mellow of a guy he is. One coach told me he's so laid back, he might not even realize the magnitude of this first start. I saw that in warm-ups, too. Now, expect Chattanooga to try and get him some easy short completions early. Guys, the staff has challenged their line. Keep him upright. Give him a chance to move the chains. Rocky, can you imagine getting your first start inside Bryant-Denny Stadium? It's amazing. Chattanooga's won the toss. They elected to defer. They will kick it off. Kendrick Law on the return has some room up the middle still on his feet trying to bounce to the outside and eventually will be brought down at the 33 yard line a return of 33. bring him out bring him out alabama will start on offense led by jalen milrow and jalen milrow as we talked about the last two weeks he's been exceptional last week against kentucky three rushing touchdowns three passing touchdowns and as Tommy Reese, the OC, told us, sometimes it takes time to figure out what your guys are good at, what they excel at. They've done that the last couple weeks, and he has absolutely exploded. So Milrow is out of the shotgun. Running back, Jace McClellan to his left. Fake the handoff. Looking for a deep shot of the opening play. That's complete. Jermaine Burton. Alabama starts it off with a bomb. A gain of 56. So Chattanooga thinks, okay, he's going to run right now. He drops back and throws a bomb to a super fast wide receiver, Jermaine Burton, down the field. What a confidence building throw early for Jalen Milrow. Well, we said Alabama would not let off the gas here today. They want to keep this momentum rolling. The ball spotted at the 11 on first down. Handoff is to McClellan. And he gets a short gain of one. Kobe Joseph. Joseph there on the stop for the mocks. One thing with Milrow, they, they've taken some of the decision making off his plate a little bit, which I think has helped. Uh, th this offense looks completely different than the one that took the field against South Florida a couple months back here. Much more efficient. The, problem, the running back goes out wide to the top of your screen. Second and nine. Milrow throwing. He will complete this one. And brought down is Isaiah Bond for a gain of five. And you see a lot of that lately. Short throws in the flat, a lot of crossers. Again, easy throws that Jalen Milrow can survey the field, find quickly, and hit. Now remember, they can't get a first down, and they get to the one. It'll be third down coming up here. Alabama has scored a touchdown in 11 straight red zone trips. Here's third and four. Milrow with time. And he's got it. Touchdown, Alabama. That's Jermaine Burton again. A five-yard touchdown pass as Alabama strikes first. That's about as good as it gets for Alabama for an opening drive. Deep shot by Milrow, then finds his guy, Jermaine Burton, in the back of the end zone. Will Reichert is on to attempt the extra point. A 7-0 start for Alabama after a four-play, 67-yard drive that spanned just under two minutes. Down this area of the field, Chattanooga thinks, okay, the run's coming, though. They drop back, get that receiver in the flat. Then again, those nice, easy throws that Jalen Miller can see right in front of his eyes, right in the middle of the field in a perfect dart right up high where Jermaine, Jermaine Burton can go get it. You know, Rocky, we talked to some of the teammates for Jalen Milrow, especially his running back, uh, Roy Dow Williams, talked about the confidence of Jalen Milrow, and they've said ever since that Texas loss, Milrow has been a completely different player. His confidence is another level. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with Tommy Reese, the offensive coordinator, again, finding ways and curtailing the offense to do what he does best. 
you know, a lot of times there's that, hey, we, we got a system. We, we want to do it this way. Well, maybe your guys aren't best at that. So during the course of a season, the good coaches find ways to put their players in the best positions so they can have the most, the, the maximized impact. See how big of a competitor he is. He has been locked in. Guys have been feeding off that energy, especially the wide receiver group with guys banged up last week. A lot of young guys having to step up against Kentucky. A lot of good things happening for Alabama right now. Riker, kick it off. And Chattanooga told us they are not going to return kicks today. And it's going to be all fair catches. So how about the kid from Huntsville, Alabama, getting his first career start, Luke Schaumburg. It's almost a dream, right? Like a little kid in Alabama dreaming about taking the field at Bryant Denny Stadium, and that's Luke Schomburg today. And the coaches told us before the game, you know, he's the future. He's the guy. They have a lot of confidence in him. The thing he doesn't have, John, is experience, which makes this a very tough first start for Luke Schomburg. Gino Appleberry, the running back, will start in the backfield behind Schomburg. First and 10 from their own 25. Schomburg will throw. And you can see the early jitters from the quarterback. That was not a smooth delivery. It's going to take a while to settle down. Yeah, and you can tell that the MO is going to be, let's get the ball out of the quarterback's hands early, really quickly, which is a very good idea against this Alabama defense. Just not quite in rhythm there. You said it's a dream for a young kid, but this could be a nightmare <laughs> going against this defense. So empty backfield on second and 10. And as Appleberry now enters the picture, he'll get the handoff on second down, and he'll pick up two. Appleberry is, is their running back. A limb four, their top running back. Went down early in the season with an ACL. He got hit at like 20 100 yard games. They'll be without him, but Apple Bear will try to pick up the slack. Now, yes, this is a team from the FCS, but this is one of the better teams. They've already qualified for the playoffs. And Nick Saban has told his guys all week just how good this Chattanooga team is. And yeah, the number 16 team in the country in the FCS. Third and eight coming up. Sean Berg, tip drill, incomplete. It actually looked like a Chattanooga player was the closest one to it, Sam Phillips, but that one hit the ground. That was almost a miraculous reception there. Immaculate reception, that ball pops up in the air, Sam Phillips right there on the spot. Great job by Terry and Arnold sticking a paw in there and batting that ball away. It's tough to throw against this Alabama secondary. These guys cover so well in the back end. Clayton Kryle is on the punt. Kool-Aid McKinstry is the deep man for the Crimson Tide. As he calls for a fair catch at the 30. So a three and out forced by the Alabama defense after scoring a touchdown on their opening possession. 7-0 Alabama. It is senior day here in Tuscaloosa. Complacency kills momentum. That's been Nick Saban's quote. He brought up to his team two pass games. Their last meeting with Chattanooga, where they drilled 3-0 midway through the second. And then their 2018 matchup with the Citadel. I was here for that. Tied at 10 at the half. And Alabama gave up more yards in that first half than they had all season long. Players we talked to said, hey, it's a reminder. Don't get too comfortable. On the second drop of the game, that's Kendrick Law. He's only able to get one there on that quick pass. And I would say the lone difference, Don, is that Citadel team was a triple option team, which is a different animal, right? That's always hard to deal with. I don't care what team you are. That's so true. And the coaches <laughs> point out, sometimes in these games, we see things that they have never even put on tape all season long. So yeah. you got to adjust quickly. That's true. But that's what's so amazing about Nick Saban. He always finds a way to challenge his guys every single week and making them better. After that short gain of one, second and nine. A handoff by McClellan. And McClellan just shy of the 35, picked up three. I'm going to go back to what you just said there, because I don't know if there's a better person on the planet at doing that. Find each week, no matter how tough or maybe not tough an opponent is, finding ways to motivate your guys when things are going well. How do you motivate them when things are going bad? It, it's such a it's, it's psychology, and he just absolutely nails it. 
He even challenged this Alabama fan base this week because the students are out for the Thanksgiving yep. break, and he said, I want everyone to come out and support these seniors, show them out for everything that they've contributed to this program. Third and five, Milrow finds his tight end, Amari Nidlack. He is a matchup nightmare. You see how many white jerseys it takes to bring him down. Picks up 19. Yeah, tight end, 6'4", 233 with 4'4 speed. That, that is the definition of a matchup nightmare. Tommy Reese was raving about him. And again, what, what a luxury for a quarterback in Jalen Milrow. When things get tough, just look for big number 84 back there. Milrow started this game a perfect five for five. He's got 86 yards in that five yard touchdown pass. To Chattanooga territory on first down. Faking the handoff, Milrow. Plenty of time. Look at the protection. Downfield. Got his man. Jermaine Burton. He steps out at the two. A pickup of 44. It was a long developing route. Burton came from the complete other side of the field. The left side, you see him at the left of your screen. But the protection is there, and then the speed allows a wide receiver to get from all the way on the left side to all the way on the right, and then a dime by Milrow. Burton is now over 100 yards on senior day. He's got three catches. And now a three tight end package for Alabama as McClellan. He gets the carry straight up ahead, trying to push the pile, waiting for the signal, and still waiting. Now the late touchdown signal. Second touchdown of the game for the Crimson Tide. No whistle, John, so you just keep on playing, keep chugging those legs. Says forward momentum was not stopped. He just keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. And then a little, a little help of his buddies, pay dirt. Two, two drives, two touchdowns for this Alabama offense. They are rolling right now. You gotta, you gotta credit this offensive line. You know, this is an offensive line that struggled early in the season. They starting at left tackle, a freshman. And Nick Saban told us how everybody else on that offensive line had to pick up the slack, had to be more vocal, had to communicate more. Tyler Booker, Seth McLaughlin, they've really taken Proctor under their wing. And that's been a huge reason for this success. Reichert on for the extra point. And a 14-0 start for Alabama. Alabama has not skipped a beat. They keep on rolling. A good start here on Senior Day in Tuscaloosa. An 11 a.m. local kick here in Tuscaloosa as fans are still filling into Bryant-Denny Stadium. But Alabama, they have been ready since the opening kick, a 14 to nothing lead. Let's meet the head coach for Chattanooga, Rusty Wright, in his fifth season, has the mocks in the playoffs for the FCS. He's done a good job. Keeping his crew together. We got the selection show for the FCS playoffs, so that bracket tomorrow, which will be, is always exciting. You know, normally we see these games in the beginning of the year. What is it like for a team like Chattanooga, who has the playoffs ahead of them, to face a tough Alabama at the end of the season? It, it, it's tough because you, before you're starting the show, you're playing an opponent that's, you know, a lot, a lot of guys are going to be bigger, faster, stronger than, right? So you worry about guys getting hurt. Uh, you worry about getting out of rhythm. You looking. You worry about looking just totally awful. And you know, Nick Saban talks about momentum, right? And rhythm. You worry about getting out of rhythm if you're a team like Chattanooga. So they got to play their game plan. Just try to execute their assignments and try to move that football. If you're just joining us, their starting quarterback, Chase Artopius, ruled out just before kick. That means the freshman Luke Schomburg gets his first ever start. Here he is coming out for his second drive of the game. And first drive, definitely some jitters, right? They, on the first throw, and but he escaped out of there. Didn't make many bad decisions. Just try to get him an easy completion here early. Try to get him some rhythm. Now, Artopius, the guy you saw on the sideline, he played four years at UCLA, so it's a big deal not having him in the starting lineup. First and 10 from the 25. Schaumburg, quick pass to the outside, finds Mays. And the defense swarms all over it. You know, 
Rocky, as a former defensive guy, I know you love this defense because it is so complex. They show you so many different formations. And, and it's, an, it's an anomaly because we live in the age where there's so much offense out there, so many formations and motions and shifts. So the tendency and what most, most defensive coaches do is, hey, we got to go simple, right? Because we don't know what they're going to do. Alabama's the opposite. They just keep adding stuff. It's very complex. You know, but Nick Saban believes uh, more is, is the answer to that. But they somehow find a way to execute it perfectly. Second and six. Empty backfield. Schomburg! Hello! And that could be targeting. We see multiple penalty flags as Chris Braswell just lights up Schomburg. And we will hear for the first time from our referee, Lee Hedrick. Personal foul targeting on the defense. That plays in the video review. Well, definition of targeting is forcible contact to the head or neck area. And, and I, I just don't think Luke Schomburg has seen a defensive end close this fast during his small window of his career here. And that's. That's definitely forcible contact to the head or neck area. Also, if you're Braswell, you're not used to seeing a quarterback not even move. I mean, the quarterback just, just there. stood yeah. there. You're thinking as a defensive player, the quarterback is going to shift or do something. That was a very odd play. Very odd, because you know, if you're watching at home, you're like, that guy's coming right there. There's no one around him. No one's blocking him. Get rid of that ball. And I think just shows the inexperience, the nerves, all that is kind of coming into play here. So our replay official, John Bible, is taking a look at this one right now with our referee, Lee Hedrick. After video review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's targeting with the crown of the helmet. Number 41 of the defense has been disqualified. So Braswell has been disqualified a senior on senior day, and that replay, that review, was pretty quick. Yeah, it was quick, and, and it was the right call. And it's unfortunate. I don't think Chris Braswell was trying to hurt Luke Schomburg. I, I, like you said, I think he was just kind of surprised at how open he was and how Schomburg really didn't make much effort to, to move out of the way. And it's a shame because Chris Braswell is one of the top players on one of the top defenses in the country plays that that jack position that's famous here at alabama very hard position to play you're dropping you're blitzing and, and he does it so well but uh his game today is unfortunately over so after the targeting it'll be a first down for chattanooga ball spot on their own 44. handoff is to appleberry and he gets a short gain of one justin e boykby on the tackle another one of those seniors at boykby well documented his story coming back for his fifth year dawn what a turnaround for him after a neck injury last year yeah and it was frustrating for him because he it was out of his control that neck injury he just had to sit there and wait to be cleared it wasn't like he could be in the weight room rehabbing and getting ready when the knee injury it was just something that he had to wait to get cleared and how about that he said he leaned heavily on his mom during that moment she was the first one he called when he got that trainer call that he was cleared to play again second and nine schomberg rolling out throws behind his receiver incomplete I want to go back to what Don was talking about with uh, Justin E. Boigby. As a player, that's often the hardest thing to do is you want to get better, you want to rehab, you want to work out, you want to do stuff. But when their, their protocol is you kind of just got to rest and sit there and heal, that, that can drive you nuts as a player. So credit him and you know, the, how much he you know, leaned upon his mom and his family to getting through that tough time. And boy, he has really turned in an excellent season this year. He said, I'm going to soak in every single moment of senior day. My last time playing here at Bryant Denny. He goes, I don't know how I'm going to react, but I'm going to be <laughs> present. I'm going to enjoy this last game at home. Third and nine. Schomburg hit as he throws. Incomplete. He was looking for Javen Watley. Good coverage downfield. Yeah, well covered. Schomburg had a Bama defender right in his chops as he was unleashing that ball. Another great stop by this Bama D. So Kryle is on for his second punt of the game. 
McKinstry is the deep man waiting at his own 15. He will back up inside the 10, and he's going to look to return this one. Ball is out! And it looked like Alabama jumped back on top of it at the 10-yard line. There's an issue fielding punts last week. This time here, you know, he's backpedaling, not something that the coaches, I'm sure, are telling him to do. He just wants to make a play, but he got that ball down by his waist, cradling that thing. He's still, no matter what, got to keep that thing tucked. So that's going to uh, get you a talk with the head man. Oh, Nick Saban's going <laughs> to find you. <laughs> yes. Because this is one of those games where you want to play a clean game because of what you have waiting for you in the rest of the schedule here. Eight game win streak for Alabama. So Roy Dell Williams now the running back in the backfield for Alabama. First and 10 from their own 15. Williams can't get through that line tripped up after a gain of two. Enjoyed talking with Roy Dell Williams yesterday too. We're going to play his last game here in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Talk about his journey from starting football at age seven with his dad. It says first game as a seven-year-old. They just put him at quarterback. I said, well, how'd you do? He says, I think I had like five touchdowns. So, <laughs> eh, not bad. <laughs> Jim Miller with the carry over the right side, making some moves, making guys miss. He's got a first down across the 25. Josh Battle brought him down after a gain of 14. Jam Miller has kind of become the home run threat of this Alabama run game. Nice cut right there, getting north-south. Big kid. He's the guy they feel like he's got the most juice, right? Yeah. Like, he's the guy who's got that big play potential. Miller stays in the game on first down. They set up the screen and upended immediately as Malik Benson, no gain. Great job by Cam Brown, Chattanooga corner, probably their best cover guy. And that's what you got to do out on that edge, especially when you're playing Alabama wide receivers. Can't wait, you got to go pull the trigger. Nice job. So Williams, after he lost his shoe, is back in the backfield. Second and 10, faking the toss. Milrow throwing to the outside, complete. Jalen Hale with the catch and the run down the sideline, a pickup of 29. It's a great job by this Alabama offense, putting a defender in conflict. The corner has a guy releasing vertical behind you, but then the flat route in front of you, he didn't know which one to take. He bites on the flat route, and then the streak route down the sideline is the one Melrow hits. Nice job. Back into Chattanooga territory, ball spotted at the 44. And off Williams straight ahead it shows you that speed burst as he picks up five. You know, it was interesting when we talked to Williams. He said, My first love was actually basketball. Yeah. At five foot ten, he's a hooper. He goes, as so I said, well, what position are you? Like, what position would you play? He goes, I can play the five, the four, the three, the two, the five. one. I'm like, really? He goes, Yeah, I could do it all. He, he certainly put himself on the uh the, the starting five basketball players of this football team roster. So uh I'm sure some other players might uh, have some questions with that, but he's, uh, he's firmly on it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I bet he's, he could be physical down there in that yeah. paint. Yeah, he's a big boy, man. He's jacked up. Yeah, he's got some hops, too. Second and six. They give it back to Williams. And he's brought down as soon as he crosses the 40. No gain. That's Cameron Brown on the stop. Yeah, he had a couple weeks ago against LSU, had a couple big runs that really helped them out in that game. Nice to see them feeding the ball here early today. You can get to the 34, it's third and five. This will be the first third down of this drive. Williams with the carry, look at that jump cut. Making dudes miss. And he picks up 15. And this is true of a lot of running backs. They need to get in a rhythm. So a couple of times they fed him the ball, wasn't really breaking many tackles. But now he sees the daylight, nice cutback, breaking tackles. He's kind of this running backs. He's kind of got to get a sweat going, get in the rhythm of the game. And I think number five has now hit it. Tommy Reese told us that second half of the LSU game, he reminded us just how dependable he is as a running back. 
with all the talent we have, he can kind of get lost, but we need to get him some more carries. There's a keeper by Milrow. Over that right side. And he'll be pushed out of bounds inside the red zone. He picked up five. A little zone read. And, and I was shocked to learn yesterday that coming out of high school, that was not something that Jalen Milrow did, that zone read. You would think a, a guy that big, that fast, would have been doing that his whole life. So he kind of had to learn about it a little bit. But executed nice there. The Chattanooga defender sunk down there with that dive fake, pulled it out. And, and there's an art to that, of reading that thing, of what the defensive end does and acting accordingly. Pitching that to the outside is Miller. And he is tripped up. But he does pick up the first down. Explain that zone read and why it's so difficult to make that split second decision. You're putting a defender in conflict, and when it's run the right way, no matter what the defender does, he's wrong, right? So if he crashes down on that run, you pull the ball out and you hit the edge. If the defender stays outside to take away the edge, you hand that ball off. Sounds easy, but it's got to take place in a split second of time, the best ones that do it. And that was something that Jalen Miro has had to work on this season, and Tommy Reese has kind of adjusted the offense to make him better understand how to make that decision. On first down, Milro, plenty of time. Throws it over the middle. We'll complete that one to Benson underneath for a gain of four. I'm impressed with the pocket presence of Jalen Miller. I know, I know this isn't the 85 Bears running after him here, but he seems calm and cool back there. Doesn't get you know jittery feet and moving all around. Just, you know, just kind of waits and bides his time for his guys to get open. This is the third offensive drive for Alabama. They've scored touchdowns on their first two drives of the ball game. Second and seven, Williams with the carry. Bounces it to that left side. He's looking for the end zone, and he gets in. An 11-yard touchdown run for the senior, Roydell Williams. How about that in your last game in Bryant-Denny Stadium? Big part of this drive, and then what an amazing cutback. That ball's supposed to go to the right, but he says, nope, the daylight's to the left. I'm going to take it that way. Puts his foot in the ground, hits the end zone. Great rush. Reichert for the extra point. And the kick is up and good. A 21 to nothing lead for Alabama off a methodical drive. 11 plays, 90 yards, just under six minutes. How about the senior on senior day? Showing out in front of the home crowd for the last time. Roy Dell Williams getting in there. Roy Dell Williams, after the 11 yard touchdown run, is back out on special teams. He told us a great story about his freshman year where he was out of position and then Coach Saban chewed him out. He said, okay, Coach, I'll do better the next time. He goes, there wasn't was a no next, next time. time. <laughs> My whole freshman year, I was off of special teams. He goes, I'm proud to be back in that same position where I was my freshman year, my senior year. Now I'm coming full circle, and I understand Nick Saban, when he gets on you, it's because he wants you to be better. But how about that? You score a touchdown in a game at Bryant-Denny Stadium, and most running backs and other teams are on the sideline. No, he's out there covering kicks again. That's how they do it here. Take a look at today's Week 13 SEC Network College football lineup. Four Eastern, three Central, New Mexico State. That's a good team. We've seen them yeah. this year. They take on Auburn, then Kentucky. They take on South Carolina in our SEC Saturday night matchup. All games also available on the ESPN app. Yeah, New Mexico State, that, that's not a great <laughs> game you want right now if you're Auburn. It's a tough team. Diego Pavia, 2,500 yards and over 500 rush yards as well. Alongside my partner, Rocky Boyman, Don Davenport on the field. I'm John Schriffen. Third drive of the game for Chattanooga. Appleby with the carry, and there has not been much running room. That defensive front for Alabama has been so good this season. Yeah, and it's what they're known for, their, their front. And it's just, it's impenetrable. And Kevin Steele yesterday told us just how, how smart these guys up front are for him and how it allows them to be able to do some more things, right? Some more stunts, some more blitzes, more, being more in sync with their calls. Ball on the 27, it's second and eight. Schomburg looking to throw over the middle, and that one is incomplete. Was looking for Jamoy Mays. And 
Jamoy May is one of their best wide receivers. It's just these receivers are having a hard time separating. Just can't get any space to be able to make a catch. Third down, they decide to run it on the ground with Appleberry. And he picks up four. He'll be short of that first down marker. So the third three and out, excuse me, second three and out forced by this Alabama defense. In this Alabama defense, uh, we've talked about Milrow, the quarterback, coming a long way. This defense has done the same. Remember, you know, last year they had Will Anderson, an all time generational player. He's no longer there. Some guys have stepped up. And uh, see, Kool-Aid McKinstry is no longer the re punt returner for Alabama after the muff punt. So Caleb, time. Caleb Downs, the new punt returner, calls for a fair catch. And that's what happens. You make a mistake, <laughs> Coach Saban will find you, and he may not allow you to make that mistake again. That's right. You, you were just telling the story about Roy Dell Williams. <laughs> Same thing happened right there. Cooley McKinstry is a very dangerous, very good punt returner. But you make a mistake, he's going to make you think about it for a little bit. But that almost shows you the intensity of a game like this. Yes, it's an FCS opponent, but Nick Saban told his guys, we need to keep momentum going, and the mistakes cannot happen. That trips you up later in the season. And, and you make a good point there, because if, if they're playing LSU right now, maybe he doesn't bench him, but he's got to send a message of like, hey, we, we got to be on top of stuff. We're not letting any mistakes slip here today against Chattanooga. Final seconds here in this first quarter. Milrow completes that one to the outside with Isaiah Bond. And Milrow will end that first end quarter, first quarter a perfect. Did not have a single incompletion in that first quarter. Alabama with a 21 0 lead. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa here with Chattanooga head coach Rush v. Wright. Coach, how would you assess Luke Schomburg's first career start so far? A little nervous to start with. We got to help him a little bit. We had a chance to make a couple of catches and do some things. Those older guys got to help him a little bit, but he's he's going to be fine. Thank you, coach. Yep, you bet. Understandable for the freshman making his first career start. A run up the middle, McClellan. Bang down. Inside the 40 at the 39, he picks up 26 yards. Yeah, Jason McClellan's a warrior back there. And again, you know, Alabama just keeps rotating in top notch running backs here. It's a pretty decent hole he had to run through as well, but then the nice cutback. You know, he's battled through some injuries and getting the bulk of the carries, though, now for this Alabama team. In that first quarter, quarterback Jalen Miro, a perfect 10 for 10, 169 yards through the air. He's looking to throw again. And there's his first incompletion. But he had a clean pocket. And Don, what's been the key to the success for this offensive line this season? Yeah, Tyler Booker told me that they, he felt they were able to slow things down in their bye week, hone in on where they needed to get better as a group. People forget how crucial that communication is on that line. And Booker pointed out having that mic point, knowing who you're working towards, knowing what the man next to you is going to do, that all matters. And the more chemistry that's built, the less checking in you have to do on that line. That's where this line is right now. Milro has time again. He's got a man. And he just overthrew Isaiah Bond. He had an easy touchdown there. Yeah, two errant throws in a row there after really being perfect so far. But yeah, I mean, just going back to what was Don was saying about the offensive line, remember the left tackle, Caden Proctor, is 18 years old, right? So you know, the fact they were able to learn that, hey, we got to help this kid out. I know Tyler Booker really took that upon his shoulders to help him out and get the communication going because th that position group above, above any others has got to play as a unit. Third and ten. Pressured and Milrow goes down. So Chattanooga gets the huge sack Bo Spearman on third down. And this is one where I, you feel like Milrow a lot of times takes uh, there's a window to the right there but he hangs in that pocket for a little bit too long. Good job, Jay Pearson on the rush as well. Really good rusher for Chattanooga. 
And, and that was a drive there where Jalen Milrow, for the first time, maybe in a couple weeks, it looked a little out of rhythm. First tackle for loss for either team as Burnham was on for his first punt of the game. But he kicks it into the end zone. It's the first empty drive for Alabama, but they still lead it 21 0. Welcome back to Bryant Denny Stadium. Alabama leading 21 to nothing here. This Chattanooga group has a, a trio of some great wide receivers, but John, the, the difference today is they're not with their guy. Chase Artopius is out, as Don reported in the game, and Luke Stromberg is in. They just haven't been able to get on in sync today. Trying to set up the screen, Reggie Davis. And he'll be knocked back for a loss of two. So this Chattanooga offense only has one first down today, and that was because of the targeting penalty. And you can tell they're trying to get Stromberg an easy completion, which is a great idea. It's just this Alabama defense runs so fast. And that guy in the flat is open, and then he's not, just like that. Guys, Chase Artopias is on the sideline. He's in pads, and Luke is relying heavily on him in between possessions. They have lots of conversations down here, him pointing out what he's missing. Second and 12, sidearm through behind his receiver, Sam Phillips. Well, that's big because Chase Artopias actually went to UCLA. He had offers to go other places, but decided to be a walk-on at UCLA because he wants to be a college coach one day. So what better way than to coach up the young freshman yeah. getting his first start at Alabama? Yeah, that's a great point. He went to UCLA to learn under Chip Kelly, one of the brightest minds, offensive minds in the game. And yeah, now he's today here. He's, he's going to have to do this someday. He's going to have to coach up a quarterback and figure out the mistakes, how to get him relaxed. It's all part of that, that duty there. Third and 12. Davis gets the handoff and that shows you where they are with their quarterback situation Rusty Wright said a little shaky start for Schomburg just want to get him kind of settled into this game yeah and they're also not going to put him in a position on a third and long where he's got to put the ball in the air and hang in the pocket at all that's why they hand the ball off right there would really just like to see some sort of easy completion given to him to get a little momentum going but that, I mean, he, he's drinking out of a fire hose right now, John. This is a lot. He doesn't have a bunch of rapport with his wide receivers. Hasn't never started a game, and here he is in Alabama doing that. So Downs comes up. We'll make the fair catch. Good starting field position for Alabama when we come back. 21 to nothing lead for the Crimson Tide. Final home game of the season. 11.57 to play here in the second quarter. Alabama with a 21-0 lead over Chattanooga out of the FCS. It is time now oh boy. for Rocky rates the rankings. Let's tell us what you think of the late of college football playoff rankings. So here's the rankings. I thought this was, I, I had much umbrage with how they, they set this thing out here. I think it was a very politically correct way to rank these, these teams here. I, I think the committee with what's going on with Michigan, didn't have the guts to put them at number one when I think they're the top team in the country. They've done that week in and week out. Offensive line, defensive line, quarterback play, Heisman guy at quarterback. I know SEC fans may not want to hear that, and I think Georgia's right there, but to me, Michigan's the top team in the country. Jam Miller with a huge hole on the outside. It's a track race to the end zone, and he's pushed out of bounds inside the 10 by Josh Battle. What a way, better way to get your offense back in that rhythm. Hand the ball off. Great job blocking. Nice hole on the outside. And, of course, the speed turning up the sideline. A gain of 45 pushed out at the 10. So Miller stays in the game at running back. On first and goal, they give it back to him. And he's brought down after a gain of three. Montrell Henderson with the tackle there for the Mox. And it was, it was great talk with Tommy Reese yesterday. And, and one of the things that becomes apparent is 
how hard it is as a coordinator at Alabama because there's so many weapons. There's so many guys that want and deserve the ball, and you got to design certain things. And uh, I guess it's, it's a good problem to have. Milrow throwing the outside, leaping into the end zone. And Robbie Otts, touchdown. A seven yard touchdown strike. A great job there. Take the easy throw. Don't pass up open guys. Get the ball in their hands and a great effort while you was getting in the end zone. Well, Reichert's been busy here in this first half. Fourth touchdown of this half, and his extra point is good. 28 to nothing start. Finding the tight end, Robbie Hoots. Well, it was all set up by that explosive run off the right side by Jam Miller, and then a little play action, which comes off the zone read. Everyone's worried about the quarterback run down here. He rides that thing down inside quickly, nice, quick throw out to Hoots. And what a great effort. Great shot here, balance, getting inside that pylon. There's Tommy Reese, former Notre Dame quarterback, of course. The OC there last year decides to come down here. The coach with Nick Saban and the, the bevy of talent they have down here. Now, he also <laughs> smiled when we asked him that question about what it's like designing plays because he knows he has so many weapons. But it was interesting that he said the first thing you do when you design a play you look at the opposing defense to yeah. figure out where their weakness is. And, and that, that's offense one-on-one. -on -one. Where's their weak link? And let's go ahead and exploit it over and over and over. Well, the other thing that stood out to me, what he talked about is, you know, with the speed they have at wide receiver, everything is on the table. There's a lot of route concepts that take too long to develop. A lot of schools can't run them because they don't have receivers that run that fast. They do here, so he can design all kinds of crazy plays to get them the ball. Check out the two SEC featured men's basketball games coming up on ESPN Plus. First on Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, Alabama A&M, they take on Auburn. Then on Wednesday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, South Carolina State facing off against Missouri. Catch all the action on ESPN Plus and the app. What a great time of year. College football as we get into playoff season, yeah. bowl season. You got college basketball starting, tipping off. I love this time of year. Yeah, this is great. Throwing, throwing the holidays or around the television, right? Checking these games out. Appleberry with the carry over the left side, tries to cut it back. And he'll pick up three on first down. Jihad, Jihad Campbell with the tackle for Alabama. Nice shot by Campbell. Playing down that line of scrimmage getting off some blocks and making a tackle. This guy does the dirty work, just a sophomore at an IMG Academy. They have a few of those guys on this Alabama roster. He's a good one. Empty backfield on second and seven. Schaumburg throw to the outside, completes it to his running back, Appleberry. He picks up six. He'll be a yard short. And there's a limb four. We, we talked about him a little bit earlier. They're their top running back. He's been out for the year. And, and that really just kind of put their offense in a bit of a tailspin. He was such a good runner, such an explosive runner to set up the rest of their offense. And without him, they just haven't looked quite as sharp. Third and one. Pass to the outside, caught by Watley, and he will pick up the first down. So that's the first down they've converted, not by a penalty today. Good job. You see this play a lot in today's football. It's an extension of the run game. Just shoot the ball out to your wide receiver. Your other wide receiver is blocking, and the importance is getting this ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly. He's got to. Boom, that thing's got to be out there. And then so important and critical for your wide receivers outside the block. It's a good job. A 
Appleberry, the running back, directing traffic. And defensively, Alabama will make the shift. Schaumburg, the pass, and it is picked up. No. Yes, it is. Christian Story with the interception for Alabama. He wasn't able to stay in bounds, but he did get the interception. Great job. He's trying to hit Jamoy Mays on the outside. And he just, I mean, zone defense, he's reading that thing all the way. Sees the wide receiver pitch up in the flat out there. And great job breaking on the ball. Story, Ed. a good play. Now he's mad at himself because he saw end zone. He yeah. wanted pick six, but he did get the interception. It's one of those ones where you're, you want to <laughs> hit the end zone, but you got to secure that catch. Get them two feet in bounds, and it's a good play. Miller will shift to the right of Milrow. Miller gets the carry. And he picks up four on first down. Mitchell with the tackle. We, we, we talked a little bit earlier, John, about this offensive line. But, I mean, can we just talk about the size of these guys? I mean, left to right, 360, 350. Uh, McLaughlin, the center, he's the tiny guy at 305. And then a 320-pound guard and a 360-pound right tackle. Massive. Oh, types of time. Milro now decides to leave the pocket, throwing incomplete. And, and the second time we've seen this, I, I feel like if this is, if they're playing LSU or Georgia right now, Jalen Miller just takes off right there. But I think he's trying to hang in the pocket. He wants to, you know, throw the ball around a little bit. And I, I just wonder how Nick Saban feels about that decision. You know, sometimes it's good to hang in the pocket and try to get your receivers open. Sometimes it's best for Jalen Milrow to put his foot in the ground and go. Needing to get to the 28, it's third and six. Milrow, he decides to take off this time, but he will not get there. Brought down at the 32, a gain of two. Good job by his Chattanooga defense. Converging on the ball, Quay Wiggles. Great junior, a guy they really like, number zero on that defensive line. I think that was the right decision by Milro. Just good job of the defense conversion. Will Reichert has had an outstanding season. 15 of 17, as long as 51. This would be from 50. Good snap. Kick is up from 50 yards out. And Riker's got it. Beautiful scene here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Last home game of the season for Alabama. They're up 31 to nothing. 7.07 to play here in this first half against Chattanooga. I love these moments around the country when they honor the men and women of our service who have served or are currently serving in, in our military. Veterans Day not too far ago, but as we yeah. said, it should be Veterans Day every, every single day, day of the year. Yeah. Amen to that, John. Before the game, honoring the 23 seniors on this roster, and we look at the seniors on the defense, the starters. Now, two of them are actually out of the game. Jalen Key, number six, injured, not able to go today. And Chris Braswell called for targeting in that first quarter. He's been ejected. And Jalen Key, he got that thigh injury a couple weeks ago, missed last week as well. I'm sure they use this as an opportunity to get him healthy for the big push here. And yeah, Braswell with a targeting call, but that's, a, that's five good football players right there. Justin E. Boygby, when we talked to him yesterday, the thing he said he's going to remember the most about being a player here at Alabama, all the guys he went against in practice, Appleberry with the run, 
He'll be brought down as he crosses the 30. He said he rattled off so many names of guys who are now playing in the NFL. And he said that's the best part about coming to Alabama. You are challenged, and oftentimes the best player you're going to play against all year is the guy on the other side of the ball. Yeah, and you're doing that every day. Every day at practice, you're playing against the best competition in the world. And, and that's what helps develop these guys and hones their skills over time. It's, it's why you see you know, guys that weren't necessarily starters for Alabama playing in the NFL because, you know, they're out there practicing against these guys. They know they can do the job. These NFL GMs, and that's why they're out there. Appleberry with the carry again, and he will have the first down. It's, John, it's just not much about this program is, is not set up around pushing you to be your absolute best, pushing you to your limit and seeing who can answer the bell and, and who can't. 17 players to the NFL draft the last two seasons, guys. How about that number? And you're right, Rocky, you talk about the superstars sitting and waiting their turn. Derrick Henry, Titans running back, one of them. And I remember talking to him a couple of years ago about how well he was prepared to step into the NFL after being here. The transition, nothing for him because it was so similar to what he had done here at Alabama. Same story across the league for Alabama guys stepping into the NFL and being ready to compete right away. Appleberry with a big carry, longest play of the game for Chattanooga. As they have another first down, and Rocky, they're starting to put something together here on the ground on this drive. It looks like they've settled in a little bit, and it's good to see. You know, they're feeling their way through this game a little bit and getting relaxed. Ball on the 48, and off again to Appleberry. And this time the defense is there for no gain. All right, for Rocky, this is my first time here visiting Tuscaloosa. We got a great tour of the facilities yesterday, and part of the reason for their success, all the toys and the <laughs> gadgets yes. that they have. I know you're a huge weight room guy. When we got walked through that weight oh, room, man. there's machines that you and I haven't even seen before. How about that bench press, the standing up bench press, because it's more realistic versus sitting down on right. a bench. You're on your feet actually pushing guys away from you. Yeah, Sornex makes all their equipment, which is one of the top equipment places in the country and yeah they have a stand-up bench and they're like where else who else has this they're like no they built that for us how about that yeah the bells and whistles and you know you got to figure that gives them a little edge here maybe helps them a play here a play there it all adds up to make them successful timeout. so a timeout chattanooga, chattanooga. we will take the, the break with them 423 to play here in the first half alabama is up big Tuesday, 7 a.m. Eastern, 6 Central on the SEC Network. We'll have our latest episode of True South. John T. Edge traveling around the southern states, meeting the locals, eating good food, talking about the South. Hey, we had some good food last night. We went to De Palma's, an Italian spot here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, good. My goodness. We had the cheesy uh, breadsticks with some pepperoni and sausage inside. I think everything had cheese on it. It was fantastic, yeah. <laughs> A lot of carbs. De Palma's, the place to be. After the timeout, second and 10. Schomburg completes it. A first down to Sam Phillips, a gain of 12. That was a good job there. Good play action by Schomburg, riding that thing down. And, and that's the key, is, is trying to ride that play fake down and then an accurate throw as that receiver bends inside. Nice job. There you go, Luke Schomburg. Relax a little bit, make a play. So for Chattanooga, this will be their first play in Alabama territory today. Ball at the 40. Handoff is to Appleberry, and he's got some space. Bouncing it to the outside. And he's knocked out of bounds at the one. Malachi Moore saved the touchdown, but a gain of 39 for Chattanooga. It's a great job. You see an offensive lineman get up on the linebacker, 30, bang. I think that was a left guard, Jeremiah Cat. Got up to the second level on Jihad Campbell. Nice run. A couple positive was plays Was he out of bounds? He could have been in, and they're going to take a look at it. A replay yeah, official, John Bible. Please the the ruling on the field is out of bounds. 
You're right, John. First look at that jumped out to me. He was in bounds. Looked like he got that ball inside the pylon. We'll take a look at it. Good cut back. Yeah, it looked to me like he. And ball inside the pylon, the right foot. I think that's a touchdown. Well, it's been the run game that has worked so far on this drive. Before that 39-yard run, they had 10 rushes for 39 yards. And clearly out of the timeout, something was said. Schaumburg has calmed down, and the Mocs have found something here. They have. A lot on the ground, but then that play action, little hitch route that Schaumburg hit, I think that just gave them enough diversity so that Alabama defense can't stack the box on them. So After the video review, it is a touchdown. The runner was inside the goal line pylon. So the call is reversed, and Chattanooga gets on the board. We're, we're really happy for this Chattanooga team settling down. Yeah, get blockers up on the second level and blocking downfield by the wide receivers. That was Javen Watley. He just just. Body slams Malachi Moore, one of the top safeties in college football. Clayton Kryle's extra point is good. Six plays, 75 yards in 338 for Chattanooga as they now trail 31 to 7. And that's something Geno Appleberry will never forget, scoring a touchdown here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Good job by this Mox team of hanging in there and you know, sometimes when things go bad early, they can really just unwind and you look terrible. And, and that's what's important for them is, hey, look, it's not likely they're going to walk out of here with a win today, but you got to maintain that momentum as you get ready to start your playoffs. You can't just flop around out there and look terrible because then that sets up a bad course of actions for the next couple weeks. So the big takeaway on that drive for the Mox, they had three plays of 10 or more yards on that drive. Got to get those explosive plays. It's, it's just hard to nickel and dime three yards here, three yards there. You got to get a couple explosives along the way, and they did. So Kendrick Law is set to return for the Crimson Tide. A short kick fielded at the 30. And that's the tight end, Oots, and he'll be brought down short of the 40. Hey, remember this guy? T.O. He was a member of the Chattanooga Mox Hall of Fame. He played from 92 to 95. Over 2,300 receiving yards, 19 touchdowns during his career. Also played hoops. Ran track too, right? I mean, he did, did a little bit of everything. He did a little <laughs> everything. A they, they've had some athletes here at Chattanooga. Another name you might not know, Fessel Shafat. He's a guy, if you follow the uh, MTV series, The Challenge, Okay. A reality TV star. He is a beast on the challenge. Here's T.O. in attendance. He also played nice. slam ball. I called slam ball this summer. That's their thing, yeah. T.O. was, and there he is on the sideline here at Alabama. He's being real quiet down there, I'm sure, like T.O., you know. Look at him bouncing off Chase McClellan. Still on his feet, brought down inside the 35. What a response for Alabama. Spearman eventually brought him down after a pickup of 28. But it was McClellan breaking the tackle of Bo Spearman early. That's, he's dead to rights right in the hole. Bo Spearman couldn't bring him down. Jason McKellen with a nice run. Under three minutes to play here in this first half. Screen pass to the outside. Bond cannot wiggle free. And a short gain of one. Now that was a, an offensive play that looked a lot like the offense they were running against South Florida. Right? Just a lot of perimeter stuff, bubble screens. It just didn't really fit their personnel and their quarterback. And he's more of a guy, again, the run game, the, cr the shallow crossers, the receivers in the flat. McClellan with the carry. And he'll be brought down by Clay Fields after a gain of two. It's so amazing just how far this offense has, has come in, in a couple months. And as we've discussed, just all around setting up, what does Jalen Milrow do best? Okay, he does this. We figured it out. Now let's give him more of that. 
and he's really taking the reins. So Williams now in there in the backfield. Movement up front. Was it offsides or a false start? Offside on the defense, number 57, in the neutral zone, causing a reaction by the offense. That's a five-yard penalty where it remains third down. So Jamar Jones called for offsides. It's actually been a pretty clean game, just the second penalty for either team. So the clock will restart. 1.40 to play here in this first half. Third and three coming up for the Crimson Tide. Williams will get the carry, and that hole just opened up. And he's got enough for a first down. Yeah, it's nice to be able to run behind two 320-plus pound bodies, <laughs> moving guys off duo block, which is a double team, pushing that three technique off the line. Runner runs right behind it. Faking the toss. Milrow throwing wide open Malik Benson. A 20 yard score. How comfortable does Miro look now in this offense? Looks really good. I mean, it, it's night and day from, from a month ago. And a little, little hug from Milro around the head for the head man there. Good job. Play action. Run the ball well. Chattanooga thinks you're running it, and then you pull it up and throw it down the seam. Off the upright, and it still went in and good. You know, I, I talked to Nick Saban yesterday about him benching Jalen Milro early in the season after that tough loss against Texas. And he, he corrected me. He said, I didn't bench him. You know, I just wanted to see who we had. It was a, uh, a quarterback competition early in the season. We wanted to see what other options we had. And quickly we learned Jalen Milrow is our best option. So he put him on the bench and then decided, right? Like, it's a matter of semantics, right? But, uh, but, but yeah, I, I think his point was, look, we, we at that stage, we're not giving up on Jalen Milrow. Not, not at all. But we, we had to see who, who's going to take the reins here, right? Who's going to take control of this position and start to play better and again as, as they found out some more, you know, more of the things Jalen Milrow does best he's taken those things and really developed his game but you got to give a lot of credit to Milrow too because you've been yeah. around a lot of football you played at the highest level in college and in the NFL when a star player gets benched it could go one of two ways and to Milrow's credit he stuck with it and he said okay I'm going to take this as a lesson and I'm going to really focus down they return for a Chattanooga is Watley. They told us they weren't going to return any kicks today. But that's the first return we have seen so far. Milrow, his number so far today, 13 of 16, just under 200 yards, 197 through the air. And I think part of that is it's a win-win for Saban because if you bench the guy, he goes in the tank, he gets down on himself, and he starts complaining, then you know you don't have your guy anyway, right? So, But if you bench him, you sit him down, and you see, hey, he's, he's really put in extra work. He's responded to that, and then he rises. Hey, now we got our guy, right? And everyone else on this Alabama team saw that too, and yep, as responded exactly. to Milrow. Under a minute to play in this first half. Chattanooga coming off of their first touchdown drive of the game. Appleberry with a run straight ahead, and he picks up three. As a former defensive guy, what has impressed you the most about this Alabama defense in this first half? I mean, first, just how they run the ball. And, and, and also, I'm a big structure guy. I, I want defenses to be gap sound, right? I, I don't like defenses where the guys are just running around everywhere. But as I look at this defense, I see there, there's always someone in the A gap, someone has the B gap, someone has a C gap, right? There's, there's no holes there. I see a lot of defense these days, and they have athletes, and guys are just running around. I used to call it rat ball. You know, this is there's a structure to this in, in, in a way guys are supposed to play, and they do it well. Second and seven, Appleberry buried in the backfield. Justin E. Boydby. And 
And that'll do it for the first half. A dominating first half performance. Alabama leading it 38 to 7 into the locker room. We will have the halftime report in the studio coming up after these messages. But first, we send it down to Dawn. Yeah, with head coach Nick Saban, coach 38 points offensively that half. What were you most pleased with? Well, we've executed really well. I think we had to pump one time, had to kick a field goal. But overall, the offense has done a really good job, made some explosive plays, and uh, started to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better in the run game in the second quarter. You've talked about building momentum in this game. How do you think Jalen Milrow has done in doing that? Well, Jalen has done great. You know, I thought we lost our momentum on defense in the drive before when they went down and scored. So got to get that back, and guys have to learn how to play for 60 minutes. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, Don, good stuff. Alabama head coach Nick Saban always challenging his guys, always has something he wants to improve on because you know what the ultimate goal here is at Alabama. They won a national championship. On senior day, the last home game of the season here at Bryant-Denny Stadium, the offense has showed out 38-7. to We'll send it to the studio after this quick break. All right, welcome in SEC Halftime Report. Here's what we've got for you over the course of the day as uh, we get a little later into the day, 3.30 Eastern. The big one on Rocky Top, number one, Georgia, trying to stay undefeated as they face Tennessee. Uh, Auburn right here on the SEC Network. South Carolina, Kentucky a little bit later. Florida goes to Missouri. But let's go back to that game coming up, 3.30 Eastern. Georgia and Tennessee. And, and it seems like every time the competition is better for Georgia. Georgia is better. And you've noticed things, CD, when you watch them on offense, right? Last couple of years, it's been a lot about the defense, yeah. but you're a fan of what they've done on offense. Well, I just go back to the, the month of September when Georgia fans were freaking out about Mike Bobo and, and, and you know, criticizing him. And, and really, what he's been able to do right now has proved to all those Georgia fans he's not a turkey that they thought he was. In fact, <laughs> he's done a nice job using a lot of different weapons. Right here, Ole Miss goes with a four short, three deep coverage. Brock Bowers with a little spot up. His presence just gains attention from the defense. Look at all that yardage behind the linebackers where he should be dropping. You can't throw it deep into the middle of the field, though, if you don't have protection. And the offensive line for Georgia does a great job of allowing Carson Beck to get the football out to Dominic Lovett for the big gain. Now, you know, sometimes you throw the ball to Brock Bowers, sometimes. You don't. In this case, they get a matchup that they like, and Carson Beck can go to it. The corner has to play fade or flat. The other two defenders are walling out the outside receivers there. And the middle linebacker has one-on-one -on -one coverage with Brock Bowers, which is a mismatch. Look at him step on his toes, slip him, and get by the position that he wasn't supposed to allow him to get there. You loved it. You, you I love that play. We used to call it wide viper. You get that linebacker isolated. You got a three-way go. Great play by Brock Bowers. But I love the fact you brought up the offensive line. They've only allowed Carson Beck to be pressured about 9% of his dropbacks, only about nine sacks. So mm -hmm. the old line, yeah. I think, is really where this whole offense starts. We me. talked about, I mentioned earlier, the last couple of years it's been heavy defense, right? Because we, and we know, we look at the Philadelphia Eagles alone, they've got Bulldogs all over that side. And now the offense is getting more attention, but the defense should not be ignored, right? Oh, definitely shouldn't be ignored. I mean, this team has been predicated on defense, although they've lost so much defensively in the last couple of drafts, but defense is where Georgia continues to make their hay. And if you're going to be a top 10 in the nation defense in scoring defense as well as total defense, it's not just making the plays on the field. It's how you make those plays. Three things I want to show you. First, communication, collaboration, and correction. This is Georgia defense at its, its finest. First, communication. You got to communicate with the other guys on the field, CD. You can't just be out there by yourself and be silent. Right here against Missouri, you see motion coming across from the Missouri offense right here. Smile Munden has to go with him. It's man coverage, but it's also cover five. You can't see the other safety, but basically two deep, five under. As he comes across here, you're going to see, let me stop it right here. See his hands up. Hands up. He's communicating to his other defensive backs. These guys say, you know what? We have these three. However they unfold, we got these three. He's telling them, you know what? All go, all go. Back up, sort it out. Make sure we don't allow any passes. Look, Georgia's only allowed two passes over 40 yards. This is why they do it. Goes downfield. They sort it out. Brady Cook rolls out. Throws an incomplete pass. But what you can't see 
is the way they maneuver it because they they what, CD? Communicate. They communicate. Especially with motion and shifts and what that does to defense is it have to communicate a little bit more. Exactly. Next collaboration. You got to work together. Georgia doesn't blitz very often, but when they do, guys are on the same page. They don't allow themselves to get caught into trying to make a play. You're going to see the defensive line go here. You're going to see the cross dog come through here. You're going to put the center in a bind right here. CJ on small money, get to the quarterback. Last one, but not least, you got correction. Now, I really love this right here because you've got to be able to take coaching and correct yourself. This is a play from Florida. The first drive against Florida. Florida gets the ball, drives all the way down the field. They throw a touchdown here to Ricky Pearsall. He's going to run a slant route. Right here you see Javon Bullard standing back there. He's going to be a little bit late in getting to the play. Florida runs motion across. He's a little late in getting to the play. He slips a bit. Florida gets the ball, runs it in for a touchdown. You get the picture. Now, let's go a few quarters later. A few quarters later. Same game, but it's going to be a different play. Or, or is it going to be a different play? Nope. Guess what, guys? It's the same play. He had to go on the sideline and make a correction. Florida goes in motion. Bullard's in the back. He's going to diagnose. We call this diagnose and recognize what's happening. And you're going to see him go like a bat out of hell and make this play. He made the correction mm. on the sideline, made the play, mm. Georgia defense stopped. So look, on defense, it's about a couple things. You got to make the play, but you also have to communicate. You got to make corrections. You got to collaborate with your teammates and not hog all the plays and let them make some too. Beautifully illustrated. Both of you two, <laughs> you guys are bossing this thing and, 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 and that's great. That's a big game. Another big game you mentioned was just saw Florida here. Florida's got to go to Missouri, and they are going to have to find a way to stop a guy that Tennessee couldn't stop. That's Cody Schrader. How about a little inside peek at Cody? FYI, Cody's 20 yards shy of a school record for all purpose if we get there. Hey, Curb, we want to get uh, Cody 20 more yards. Okay, get 20 more yards. It's all purpose, so it doesn't matter if it's run or pass. He's 20 yards from a school okay, record. Told him. Okay. Well, if he don't want it, he don't want it. It's fine. Okay. You can't go. We didn't build this team off chasing records, you know, so. Yeah, go know. get it, man. Well, I wanted to score again. That's why I was throwing that no. D. I know. Great job. Great game. Great job, man. Great game. Oh, oh we stood on it. stand on yeah. and business is booming all right <laughs> business is booming hey man yeah unbelievable i mean there, there's not anything more that you can say than he's superman okay uh i don't know how many rushing yards today luke 205 <laughs> He had 116 receiving yards. At the end of the game, we told him he was 20 yards away from breaking a school record. And he said, he's not built for school. He said it wasn't more important to him than the team. He represents everything about us, man. You deserve a game ball, man. The more you watch him, the more you hear him, the more you hear it's about him. It's a walk-on, by the way. I know, right? The more Formal you love him. The more you love him. I don't know if you saw Out of Pocket Wednesday. He's got the sleeve of tattoos. Mm -hmm. They asked him what his favorite one was. Pointed one of them, he said, this entire arm. He, he pointed one out, but he said the entire arm is for a high school friend of his who is no longer with us. But he thinks about him all the time, and the entire arm sleeve is about that kid. I, I don't know how you, you, you knock anything about him. I mean, we were just talking about how mature that decision was. I'm like, would you go in? I might go back in and get the, the record. But, you know, it speaks volumes to the team. When your teammates see that you are a team player, that it's not about you, 
they'll go to war with you every day. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think the, uh, the culture of this team is the thing that's been the most surprising to me. We talked all last year. It was about Luther Burden and getting him more touches. He's a, he's a great player, but he hasn't shown any signs of selfishness for the ball being distributed to other people, for Cody Schrader having a, a huge day, yeah. for uh, Brady Cook throwing the football to Theo Weiss or, or Mookie Cooper, any of those other guys. I think that's the thing that struck me the most is just the, the pure unselfishness of this total team that's around uh, yeah. what, what was built upon Brady Cook and Luther Burden. It's wild. Nobody talked about Missouri in the preseason. Not much, but there they are with a little nine next to their name. They'd be in the playoffs next year. Yeah, That's right. They would be a playoff team next year. Incredible. Missouri, Florida, that's prime time on ESPN a little bit later in the evening as we send you back to your game. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama on Senior Day. The seniors showing out. Crimson Tide with a 38-7 lead over Chattanooga. Jalen Milrow, quarterback, 13 for 16, 197 yards through the air, three touchdowns, an outstanding start for Alabama. They knew against an FCS opponent that they could not let their foot off the gas pedal, and they've been listening to Nick Saban, who's been preaching that all week long. Let's keep this momentum going. What's up, everybody? Welcome you back inside the booth alongside my partner, Rocky Boyman. Don Davenport is on the field, and I'm John Schrippen. Well, you look at the score, obviously, dominant performance by Alabama, but what impressed you the most? I, I think, first of all, offensively, Jalen Miller got off to an amazing start. I think he was 10 for his ter first 10, ran the ball well, made great decisions in the past game. This offense, as we've discussed, set up around what he does well. Well, he can throw the deep ball, too. This is the first play from scrimmage. They decide to go deep. And then from there, again, just looked really comfortable, finishes off that drive. With a big touchdown later on, and then a little play action, get the fullback in the flat, let him do the rest. Jalen Milrow has looked really, really good today. Now, Nick Saban did tell Don at the end of the half he was not happy with the way his defense allowed a touchdown for Chattanooga towards the end of that first half. He wants some things cleaned up. A 38-7 lead here in this first half. We are getting set for the third quarter kickoff. Alabama, Chattanooga, come on back. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. We get ready for the start of the second half. Before that, Dawn had a chance to check in with Chattanooga head coach Rusty Wright. Yeah, guys, he said he saw his redshirt freshman quarterback settle in a little bit in that first half, especially on that touchdown drive for them. Saw it on the sidelines, and he also said there's some other guys that have to help their young quarterback step up, too. They've got to make plays for him. He said we've had some opportunities. We gained a little bit of confidence from that drive, but now we've got to do something with that here in the second half and help out our quarterback. Well, Chattanooga will receive this third quarter kickoff. Yeah, and I think what Coach is talking about is that, that wide receiving core for Chattanooga is pretty good. Javen Watley, Jamoy Mays, Sam Phillips need to help him out a little bit, make some more plays. Now, we did see some early drops from the mocks in that first half. We saw nerves all around, understandably so, when you come mm -hmm. into a thousands, well, 100,000 seat stadium. As we look at the total yards in that first half, once again, if you're just joining us, the normal starter, Chase Artopius, dealing with some some pain in his shoulder, did not get the start for Chattanooga. And the freshman, Luke Schomburg, making his first career start as he gets this drive to start the second half. They start on the ground with Appleberry still on his feet. He's had a strong game at running back, a gain of six. And when you look at the numbers on Appleberry, that's his 13th rush for 81 yards. He had that big touchdown earlier. Had some great blocking, great effort by him. And, and that's the thing about, about running the ball. you you, you got to stay with it. It's something that early in the game isn't usually there. Defenses are all fired up, but you stay with it a little bit, and things can break. Second and four. Throwing by Schaumburg. Dangerous throw. Trying to find Phillips, but Story, he was looking for his second interception. And, and it's just hard to throw that ball in zone defense because Story's eyes playing zone are looking right at the quarterback. 
and he, he's watching his every move. And as soon as his eyes go there and then the offhand releases, he's breaking. You can see he's breaking before that ball leaves the quarterback's hands. That's a good job. On third down today, Chattanooga is one for five. Pass is complete, and the mocks do have a first down with Sam Phillips. Still a nice play by Terry and Arnold right there. He was getting blocked. He was able to defeat the block, and I mean, because there was there some green grass out to the sideline there. He not being able to bring him down, but they get the first down here, move the chains. At the 36 on first down, Appleberry trying to make a cut, and he will fall down for no gain. It's just an inside zone play, and they just hand the ball off to Appleberry. That zone, that offensive line zones to the right, trying to block not a man but an area and let Appleberry pick the hole. Now, this is an offense who we've seen a lot of trick plays throughout the season. They've got two wide receivers who are former quarterbacks, so they can kind of come up with something special. But when you're on your backup quarterback, right. they've been pretty deliberate with the run game so far today against Alabama. Second and ten, wide open down the seam. Javon Watley pushed out of bounds in the red zone, a gain of 54. Caleb down, saved the touchdown, but Chattanooga starting to pick up some confidence. I'm not sure what Caleb down saw here. He was just a little late on the break. I mean, he's a guy who usually sees the field and sees the route develop so well. Just looked a little bit confused there, and before he knew it, Wally was heading down that seam. That is the longest pass allowed on the season by this Alabama defense. Wow. And Nick Saban talked That's about right. it. That's right. Going into the half, he challenged his defense to be better in the second half. A two tight end formation for the Mocs. Appleberry with a run straight ahead. Yeah, that's the thing. He was very pleased with his offense in the first half. In the second half, talked about the defense. Maybe letting their foot off the gas a little bit. He can be none too pleased with that big gain there. T.O. likes it. He looks like if he gave him a pair of shoulder pads and a helmet, he could still go out there and get it done and not look out of place. I don't even think he needs shoulder pads. <laughs> That's true. That dude is jacked. On second and goal. The run to Appleberry, trying to find the edge. And he'll be dragged down at the five on Darius Robinson. Good job. And there's a lot of penetration by this Alabama defensive line, but Appleberry able to stay to his feet before Dallas Turner and company were able to finish him off. So they mark him down at the six. It'll be third and goal for Chattanooga. This is a critical play for this Alabama defense here. They, they can't be giving up scoring drives like this. Opening drive of the second half for Chattanooga. They're trying to march it down the field. Man coverage. Schaumburg, pump fake, throws. Incomplete. That was good coverage batted down by Caleb Downs. Yeah, down here, this area of the field, you cannot allow any even small windows for the quarterback to fit the ball. So they go man to man. There's Downs. Again, who sees the field really well. He knows what's coming. Guy goes out, that means he's coming back in. Here comes the slant route, and he jumps it. He's able to put a right hand out there and knock it down. Clayton Kryle, a 23-yard field goal attempt. So Chattanooga starts this second half with a drive down the field that ends with three points. Nine plays, 69 yards in 414. Alabama still on top big. We go to break. Nick Saban talking to his defense after Chattanooga has scored on back to back drives dating back to the end of the first half. Yeah, and that long play they had 
It just looks like Caleb Downs is normally a guy. He's always in the right spot, sees the defense, sees the routes develop well, just looked a little out of position, didn't expect an inside breaking route, but he was able to track him down. A short kick as Danny Lewis Jr. will return it for Alabama to the 45. And let's see who comes out at quarterback for Alabama. It looks like it's going to be Ty Simpson. So the day for Jalen Milrow is done. He played one half, 13 for 16, 197 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he had quite a day. I think Nick Saban and company got to be really pleased with Jalen Milrow the day he had. But a little time for Ty Simpson. Got a lot of people we're talking about. High recruit. And a Westview High School there in good old Tennessee. So first snap for Simpson. Throws, finds his tight end, Nye Black. And when we, when we talked to Tommy Reese about Ty Simpson, he said we wanted to get him game time because he got in earlier in the season, and we feel like he's calmed down now, a little less jittery in the pocket. So these are going to be some critical snaps for him. Yeah, and, and this is what these games are good for, you know, which is why you want to go, you play well, and you get some other people in the game and allow your quarterback to develop. Simpson now two for two as he completes that one to Isaiah Bond and a first down for Alabama. I mean, look, there's only one way to develop, and that, that's experience. You got to do it. You can't sit there and watch all the time. You got to get in the game and make plays and screw up a little bit and fix them. And that's why it's important to get these guys reps here. I mean, especially for a quarterback. There's just so much that goes into it. Williams with the carry, hits that hole hard on the left side. Stutter step, hits the defender going out. And Roydell Williams, the senior, has got a first down, a pickup of 13. Don, what else you got on Ty Simpson? Yeah, I was actually on the call for his state title game in Tennessee. He led Westview to their first ever state title, completely took over that game, threw for three touchdowns, rushed for another two, just dominant. And I'll tell you this, he helped to recruit a lot of young talent here to Alabama with him. Mm -hmm. And so he's pretty close to a lot of these young guys. Well, that's an important part of the program as we have penalty flags here before the snap. Snap infraction on the office number 56. That's a five yard penalty where it remains first down. So that's on the center, Seth McLaughlin. Yeah, and not the, the same play menu for Ty Simpson that Jalen Milrow has. Again, with a little bit more design QB runs to the perimeter. Of course, Simpson can run. You'll see that zone read action. After the penalty, it's first and 15. And that pass is broken up, tipped incomplete. That was Cameron Brown getting his hand on it for Chattanooga. Good job by Cam Brown timing that thing. It's always so tough. You're running in there and you've got to time it perfectly. But when that quarterback gets it out of his hands, there's the jump and able to bat it down. Second and 15, plenty of time for Simpson, and he finds Kendrick Law dragging down at the end zone. Touchdown! A 32-yard touchdown pass as Law drags defenders with him into the end zone. Good job by Simpson. First off, really the offensive line gave him a great pocket and allowed him the time because Kendrick Law came from all the way from the right side of the field to the left. But look at the protection, calm in the pocket. He's just waiting, waiting, and then once he gets across to the top of the numbers, ball's on the money. Now, did he get in? So the play was called a touchdown on the field, but they're going to go up to the replay booth and see if, in fact, Law did score. Let's take another look. Did a good job fighting for some extra yards. Ooh, I think that right knee's down before he crosses that line. This would be a great shot right here. Good job by our camera crew. Yeah, that's going to be down on about the six inch line, I think. So the key is where is the ball when his knee comes down? And when you look at that pylon, 
Rocky, you think it's short? Yeah, I, I think it's about six inches short. I think the right knee is down before the nose of that football crosses the front of that white end zone line. And it's close. Still a heck of an effort by Law. I mean, he was oh, hit a, heck of an a few yards short, and he made it close. Once again, the ruling on the field is a touchdown, but you think there is enough evidence to overturn I, it? I do, and that's what it is, indisputable video evidence. To me, it looked like there was enough. For that After review, of video evidence shows that the runner was down short of the goal line. The ball will be placed inside the one-yard line where it will be first and goal. And, and that's the right call, again. To, to me, it, it's clear enough where there's no wavering to it. You know, there's no, I don't know what I think. That, I mean, he, Right there, that knee's down, and it's clear. That ball is a good six inches a foot short of that end zone line. So fifth appearance in the red zone for Alabama today. They are a perfect four for four with four touchdowns. They got the big boy package with three tight ends, and Justice Haynes is the running back. He gets the carry, and he is in there for the touchdown. Justice Haynes, the freshman, first carry of the day, touchdown. A guy they really, really like. Reichert, his extra point is up and good. So after Chattanooga scored on back-to-back -back drives, Alabama responds with a touchdown of their own, and they push the lead back to 35. Come on back to Tuscaloosa after this. Alabama behind backup quarterback Ty Simpson scoring their first possession here in the third quarter, a 45-10 lead for Alabama, and they have surged in the second half. You go back to September 23rd against Ole Miss. They trailed 7-6 to six at the half. Turning it around to win 24 to 10. October the 7th, Texas A&M down by seven at the half. They win that game by six. How about 21st against Tennessee in October? They were down 20 to seven, winning it 34 to 20. And then against LSU, it was tied and they win it 42 to 28. What's been the key to the third quarter for Alabama? I, I think a lot of it, John, is th this is a coaching staff and a team that that figures out during the course of a game what the opponent is doing. And it's one thing to come into a game with a great game plan, but you must adjust, you must adapt, you must see what they're trying to do and counterattack that. And they're, they're doing some of the best in the country at it. Connor Talty, the new kickoff man for Alabama, kicks that one into the end zone. And so Chattanooga will come back on offense, scored a touchdown their last drive of the first half scored a field goal on their first drive here, their first drive of the second half. What do they do here on this possession? Well, I know that man right there wants them to come out and just lay the wood down and force a three and out and get off the field. That's what he needs to see. The mock start from their own 25. Quick pass to the outside. And Javen Watley gets about two. You see Schomburg, his day started off, didn't start off very well, but which is understandable in this situation, getting kind of thrown in the fire last, really learning a couple days ago that he was gonna get the start without much experience. And since then, settled in six to seven. Reggie Davis in the backfield. Schaumburg looking to throw across the middle to find Mays, and that's enough for a first down. Brought down at the 39, a gain of 13. It's a nice play. Again, set up by play action out of the shotgun. What you're trying to do is get those linebackers to bite in, even a couple steps there, and then you bring that little hitch route right around the backside there and cut it in.
And off is to Davis. And Davis has a couple. He'll get two yards on first down. You can see now that this, as you said, Chattanooga is starting to settle in. Why this team has been so effective in the FCS, and they've already punched their ticket to the playoffs. <coughs> and they have, and, and you know they've, they've played really good football. You know, just two league losses on the season, and, and they're looking to build here. They, they, you know, they got a good team, and they feel like they can bode well in this playoffs once it starts here. That's why they want to come out here, and even though they don't get the win, they, they play well. And you know, who knows what's going to happen with their starting quarterback here. If he'll be back for the, the tournament, Chase Artopius. So whistles before the snap. And timeout, Chattanooga. Well, what they will come out of here with is a nice paycheck. And they hope to be injury free. Chattanooga with a timeout. We'll be back. The eighth ranked team of the country, Alabama, with a 35 point lead over Chattanooga. I, I know you like Michigan, Rocky. I still, <laughs> I'm not sold on them yet. I'm still not sold. I, I think at the end of the year, Alabama gets themselves into the playoffs. Well, I mean, there's no question they're they're playing great, you know, but unfortunately they have that double digit loss to Texas here at home. So you, you can't forget about that. But look, I think it's all going to sort itself out. I think I still think Michigan has been the most consistent team all year. But this Alabama team, boy, they are on fire right now. Second and eight throwing on the run. Catch is made. And we do have a penalty flag as Sam Phillips reels that one in. Ineligible player downfield on the offense. That's a five yard penalty from the previous spot where it will be a replay at second down. Here's what I'll tell you about the selection committee. I went through that mock selection earlier this year to see how the process goes with all 13 members. One of the biggest things they also take into account, how you're playing as of late. Mm -hmm. And they watch yeah. every single game. So even though Alabama's had that loss early in the season to Texas, that was early. And they'll look at this Alabama team and see who they are now, how this offense has evolved, how the defense has evolved, and how they're stomping on teams right now. And that's going to play a big part down the stretch in the playoffs. After the penalty, it's first and 15 on the ground with Davis. And he get that, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Marshall with the tackle. So two remaining games on the schedule for Alabama. And, and obviously a big part of that is, is you know, they got to do their part, which is win out. And if you get a win over now number one ranked Georgia, that does a ton for your resume. The, the you have to be in, right? You have to, yeah, yeah. Well, the problem is you got FSU who's undefeated. You got maybe Washington that could go undefeated. You know, do you do you put a one loss team ahead of a an undefeated team? I, I don't know the committee. That'd be a tough one on third and ten. Schomburg has time. Throwing sidearm and almost picked off. Campbell with his hands on it. Incomplete. And, and I 100 percent agree what you're saying there, because I believe you should account for who's playing the best at this time of year. It's just can be a tough sell when you're saying, well, wait, this team that it, all year it doesn't have a loss, you're going to put a one loss team above them. I agree there's a scenario for that, but I, does the committee have the guts to make a decision like that? I don't know. Look at their strength of schedule. You put Agreed. Michigan in the SEC, they could have three losses nah, by now. I don't know about that. They are not that good. Put Florida State in there, I, I would say yes to that, what you just said. Punt return by Caleb Downs, and he finds a seam. He makes the punter look silly. Caleb Downs, show him what you got. Touchdown, Bama. An 84-yard punt return for a touchdown by Caleb Downs. We do have an injured Chattanooga player down. And, and Alabama's had a couple issues receiving punts the last couple weeks. Well, this may have solved some of those issues. Great job fielding the punt. And then, and look, you're talking about just a 
premium superior athlete making plays in space and the speed. Wow. And let's remember, Downs is only in there because McKinstry muffed a punt in that first quarter and was pulled by Nick Saban. So it looked like a pretty smart decision by Nick Saban to go with that. And that's something uh, Alabama's next opponent is now going to have to look at and say, okay, well now we got to count for Caleb Downs in the punt return game. Rikers extra point makes it 52 to 10 with just under five minutes to play here in the third. Will Reichard now has 519 career points. Trying to chase down Keenan Reynolds, who has 530 all time. Let's look at that punt return by yeah, Downs. We got to look at this again. I mean, talk about this. You just catch the ball, go left, go right, spin around, and then just leave defenders in the dust. There's, there's just no real arc to that thing. Oh, You're he said peace. See ya. Yeah. You know, your blocker will set up a certain way, but it's all about running the daylight. And, and I think this is one of the hardest jobs in football. Fielding punts, you got 11 guys screaming downfield on you. That ball is high in the air. You got to not only catch it, but then do something with it. It's just one of the most impressive plays in football, in my opinion. I'm telling you, with the way Alabama is playing right now, this has to be one of the four best teams in the country. There is no doubt about it. It, it's it, it's going to come down again them handling their business and if they keep playing this way I think they will still think they're going to need a little bit of help here with how it's going to work out but I, I don't disagree if you're judging just on eye test who's looking the best and playing the best at a particular time 100 percent it's Alabama but if you consider schedule and you kind of got to beat the teams on your schedule a double digit loss at home will go against them. Now I'll tell you this all 13 committee members they each get an iPad they get a chance to watch every single game in college football and they put a huge emphasis on physically watching games. Now the games are condensed so they're shortened so they can actually watch a lot of the games but they make sure to get an mm -hmm. eye on every single team so they are informed when they make their vote. Here's my question though would a committee member have the guts to take an Alabama team, a one-loss team over a Florida State team that went undefeated and won the ACC title game. Would they have the guts to make that call? I, I don't know. Should they? Maybe. Absolutely. But well, do would they? I don't know. Ohio State still has to play Michigan. Exactly. That so there, are, there are yeah. still some things that have to be played out. Now, it'll get especially good for Alabama if if it gets down to Oregon and Washington in the Pac-12 game and Oregon would be able to beat Washington, that would give both those teams a loss. You could then make the case, okay, Alabama's better, but to put a one-loss team over an undefeated team, I just, I, I don't know if the committee but you're would telling have the guts me to do it. The SEC champion would get left out. See, I'm with you, Shrift. That does not happen. And it, with the way they're playing right now and with what they have left, I mean, they still have Auburn, and I get that record is not what it usually is, but it's at Auburn. That is a tough game every single year. If they can handle business there and they go win the SEC championship in one of the best conferences in the country, you don't leave that team out. I'm with you, Shrift. I don't disagree with you, but if you have an undefeated Washington team and an undefeated Florida State team, versus a one-loss Alabama team, I may very likely put Alabama in. I'm just saying the committee won't do it. Write it down. Wow. I think whoever wins the SEC automatically is in. That's a guarantee. I, I don't disagree with that. So if I'm Alabama beats Georgia the committee for the would, SEC would see it the same way. The, I mean, the ACC would have an absolute conniption fit. On uh, third and one, a first down for Chattanooga. Now they pick up seven on the ground. And Appleberry has now gone over 100 yards on the ground for Chattanooga. 101 yards. He, he has had a strong performance today. He has. But by the way, isn't this the fun part of the college football in the playoff? Oh, is yeah. the, you can make so many cases, and that's why it's great. And, you know, and obviously, and people say, oh, this will be solved next year with the 12th. No, we'll still be arguing, which is a good thing. That's what's, what makes it so fun. But, boy, I, I'm impressed with this Alabama team. I think they went out. There's certainly a big case for them to be in that dance. Appleberry trying to bounce it. And defense does not allow him to get to the edge. Campbell there with the tackle. He stood him up for a gain of one. 
Here's the other thing I'll say about this Alabama team that maybe we haven't seen in the past, that chip on the shoulder, because mm -hmm. everybody counted them out, right, early on. And, and talking to Tyler Booker, that's big for this offensive line. We have to go out and prove every single week how good we are because we were not good early on. The whole link where you can now go buy one of those uh, T-shirts, guys. <laughs> Let all the naysayers know. That's something to remember, too. This is a chip on the shoulder kind of Alabama team now. And you're right, Dom, because there's years where Alabama in the preseason, there are not not crowned, but it's like, OK, this is a dominant team and they should roll and almost makes it harder on Nick Saban and the team because the expectations are so high. But now this team has been able to just kind of develop and they're playing with that chip on your shoulder on their shoulder. As you mentioned, it's a good thing. Nick Saban actually told us that in our meeting with him yesterday. He said in years past when the expectations are high, guys may not have as much fun playing because they have that expectation. He said with this year with so much to prove, guys are having more fun. I'm actually having more fun coaching them. On third and nine, throw is by Schaumburg. And a nice run after the catch by Watley. So another first down for the Mox. It's a good job of Watley staying alive there. Christian Story was barreling down. He's able to shake the tackle and get the first. How about we check in on the All-State playoff predictor? The best chance to win a title. Ohio State is in the front with 22%. Alabama right now at just 7%. What, what do they say? But if you're a stock, buy low, yeah, sell high. Yeah, sell high, yeah. I, I'll tell you what, I, I mean, I'll say this emphatically. I wouldn't want to play Alabama right now if I'm no Georgia, way. Michigan, I don't care who it is. Reggie Davis with a speed burst. He picks up three. And I think what impressed me, too, is when you play a team from the FCS, there's a potential to play down to your competition. Mm -hmm. We did not see that at all today. No. And we heard that from everyone this week, how much Nick Saban has preached that. Keep momentum going. Keep the what we've built this season, because once you fall off that track, it is hard to get back on. And there's been no let up from Alabama. Yeah, I mean, he, he, yeah, maintaining that rhythm. He said, once you lose rhythm, it's hard to get it back. That's why he just cannot, this time of the season, let it go. Second and seven, Davis lowers his shoulder. And he is thrown back after getting back to the line of scrimmage by Campbell. Campbell's been super active, been around the ball. Yeah, he's done a good job. This whole defense, you know, with some lapses here and there. As we see Caleb Downs coming off the field there. Alabama putting four fingers in the air. Last quarter of play this season at Bryant-Denny Stadium coming up after this. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. One more quarter to go here with head coach Nick Saban. Coach, you told me at halftime you wanted your defense to shore up a few things. What are you thinking about them on this drive? Well, we're, we're not playing like we need to play, but we're getting to play a lot of players, so it's good experience for them. And we got to get off the field on third down. That's the key to the drill. Thank you, Coach. Right, thank you. Well, this is third down, and we have penalty flags blowing this one dead. Ball start on the offense, number 52. It's a five yard penalty where it remains third down. That's the right guard, Elmarion Krim. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to not jump off sides when you got that Alabama defense barreling down on you. We talked about Geno Appleberry, the running back, up over 100 yards. He's the first player from an FCS school to have over 100 yards on the ground against Alabama in over 20 seasons. Wow. What a great job. We start this fourth quarter with a third and 12. Reggie Davis, a run on the ground to the right side. He'll be well short. And that's where the penalty just killed them because you know they get backed up and you know, third and long, you don't necessarily want to put one in the air and got to run the ball. They stop it and here comes a punt. And you don't want to kick it to Caleb Downs, who just yeah. returned a punt for a touchdown the last time out. Yeah, I think they're going to try to directionally kick this thing to the sideline, if not out of bounds. So Downs is waiting on his 10 yard line. 
A high sky punt from Kryle. Well, Put in the end go zone. into the end zone. <laughs> Alabama up by 42. We come back to Bryant Denny after this. Tonight, the SEC final, football final crew will take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games. 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, coming up after the Kentucky-South Carolina game on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. So Ty Simpson stays in at quarterback for Alabama for their first drive here in this fourth quarter. Handoff is to Miller. And Miller is driven into the ground after a gain of five by Kobe Joseph. It's been good for Alabama to, as Nick Saban talked about, get some different guys in the game. I mean, that's, to me, if you ask me what's one of the biggest reasons Alabama's so good year in, year out, it's not that their top-level guys are great. We know that. But there's other teams that have good top-level talent. But their depth, right? Their backups. And how do you get good? You, you got to get in the game and play the game. And so now something happens. They have guys that have experience. In and out of the hands of Jalen Hale, incomplete. I mean, I mean Jalen Hale, true freshman. Trying to get him more involved. God, they, they love how high his ceiling is, fast. And to your point, that's why these snaps are so important, because yeah. Jalen Hale is a guy who they think is going to be the superstar wide receiver in the future. First third down of the half, but we've got a penalty flag. False start on the offense, number 54. That's a five-yard penalty where it remains third down. And there's a backup freshman offensive lineman, McVeigh, that is moving his feet around as that ball is getting ready to be snapped. Another, another 350 pounder for that Alabama offensive line. Still not, not many penalties, just three penalties each team. So it backs up the Crimson Tide. It's third and nine. Simpson flushed out to his left. He's going to try to pick it up with his legs. He does and more. Simpson crossing the 50 inside the 35 on his feet. No way! Ty Simpson to the house. A 79-yard touchdown by the backup quarterback, Ty Simpson. Wow. Talk about Simpson not being quite the runner Jalen Milrow is. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he heard that. And this boy can scoot. We knew he's a dual threat quarterback, but about the speed in the open field. Nice job blocking downfield as well by Kendrick Law, helping him escort him to the end zone. And just don't drop that ball too soon, though, Ty Simpson. We've seen that be an issue this year. 79 yards. That is the longest run of the season for Alabama. Credit to Ty Simpson. I'm telling you, this is what they're looking at. Did he drop that ball too soon? Oh, boy. I saw it. Oh, boy. I saw it. So they go to the replay to see if Ty Simpson did, in fact, score. Take a look, it gets the block downfield, but when does he start to let loose of this ball? Oh, there. no. Oh. See, I, oh. I mean, when are players going to learn? When are players going to learn how many instances, how many times do these shots get put out on Twitter and Instagram of people doing this? What happened last week with Washington, right? Like, it's just, it, it's absolutely insane why you would even, even flirt with that being an issue. And you know that's one of the things that will not make Nick Saban happy. I just, you, you can't understand. It's very simple. Cross the end zone, throw the ball to the referee. I mean, I mean if, it should just be a habit. If you're an offensive guy, 
you score a touchdown, you physically hand or toss the ball to the referee. And that's. But it, is there enough evidence to overturn it? That's, that's my it, question. It, it, it I'm, I'm still not convinced where he dropped this ball. It was ruled a touchdown on the field. I mean, right there, that ball's oh. coming out of his hand before the line, but then the ball lands in the end zone. But I, I, I think this is going to be overturned. And okay, so what is Nick Saban telling his he, young he's saying, quarterback? Why would you even after make video this review? Here? Evidence shows that the runner dropped the ball prior to breaking the goal line play. The fumble occurred inside the one yard line where it rolled dead in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be returned to the one half yard line where it will be first and goal. Nick Saban will not even look at his young quarterback. No, he's, again, he's just saying, how would you even allow that to be an issue? So because there was no clear recovery in the end zone, this ball will be spotted at the one-yard half, one half line. And Simpson is sick right now, but again, how many times does this have to happen before players understand the message of, just don't even make it close. There's no reason to flip the ball to the referee, and it's not an issue. So Richard Young, now the running back to the left of Simpson. Young gets the carry, and he pushes his way into the end zone for the touchdown. They get the touchdown anyway, but Ty Simpson is, is going to be sick. And I know he is right now. And, and that man right there, he's, he's probably going to have something to say about it in the meeting room on Monday, if not sooner. Mm. So as it stands, it's now officially a 78-yard run by Tom Ty Simpson. Still the longest run of the season by Alabama, but it was capped off by Richard Young. His teammates are consoling him a little bit because they know how much that's got to sting. But it's you know it, it's a lesson that just just got to learn without it happening to you. Extra point is good. So that was an important score for some who have a close eye on this game in Vegas. <laughs> Still over 13 minutes to play here in the fourth. Alabama up big. Well, Alabama has been in this position before. You go back to 2021, they play at Auburn November 27th. Alabama goes 97 yards in the final two minutes to tie it up. They eventually would win it in four overtimes to save their chance at a playoff. Then, in the SEC Championship game, December 4th, they took it to Georgia, who was then number one. Rocky, it's all setting up to how we've seen it play out before. Alabama has a chance to control their destiny. That's right. It is very similar because they had a loss earlier in that season as well. Just like this one, it was early enough where they had time to right the ship and correct things and build momentum. I still say as the committee sees it, they're probably going to need some help. But you know, all they can control is how they play. And right now they are playing lights out. May spun down as soon as he crosses the 20. Now. When you look at the score, obviously it's been lights out for Alabama, but there are some things if you want to pick at that they could theoretically clean up, right? Yes. The punt return was dropped yep. earlier on by McKinstry. They've had a couple of chances at interceptions that have been dropped. They've let Chattanooga have a rusher run for over 100 yards on the ground. Yeah, no, absolutely. You had a you know, quarterback drop the ball short of the end zone. There, Yeah, there's, there's things that and, and Nick Saban is not a uh, you know, bury the film guy. You know, some go ah, after a lot, you know, something happens, let's just not watch it. No, they're going to watch, they're going to correct, they're going to be, you know, point out the things they need to continue to get better at. But I still think, obviously, I, you know, everything is going to be very positive coming out of this game, though, as well. Appleberry adds to his rush total. He picks up two more yards. How cool of a conversation did we have with defensive coordinator Kevin Steele yesterday? He said, I was the very first hire when Nick Saban originally got this job. He goes, I know him pretty much better than anybody else. <laughs> he goes, he loves his schedule, and he keeps to his routine. habits and his yep. routine. He goes, 
If it's 1030 on Monday, I know exactly where he's yep. going to be. If it's Tuesday at 9 o'clock, I know exactly what he's going to be doing. And he starts his morning every, every morning off with the Little Debbie snack cakes and the, and the coffee and every day. Schomburg going downfield, throws it out of bounds, incomplete, was looking for Mays. And you see a lot of that, you know, a lot of very highly successful people, CEOs, they, their routine, right? They just want to get in that groove, and that's where they're comfortable. That's how they operate. And, you know, and, and I just love what Steele said, too, just in terms of, you know, he, he's seen it, Nick Saban, back in the day you know, in 2007 to now. Nothing has changed. His, how involved he is hasn't changed. It's exactly the same over a couple decades. Yeah, so it's incredible. And let's be real, that's what it takes yep. to be at the top year after year after year. Third and eight. Davis on the ground. And he gets hammered as soon as he crosses the 25 by Campbell again. Dawn. Yeah, you guys talking about the routine and uh, this week with this Chattanooga game that has come up again because he talked about how it's so important to stay in that routine. He wakes up every day, lets his dog out, has those oatmeal cream pies, <laughs> two of them. So you guys know I had to dig a little bit deeper because I couldn't stop imagining what his pantry looked like if he's having 14 oatmeal cream pies a week, right? It's every morning. <laughs> so uh, we, we dug a little deeper and he told me, imagine the biggest cookie jar you can he has one bigger than that at home with all his uh little debbie cookies in it and then one at the office he also joked guys pointed out you know everyone gives him such a hard time about the cookie jar but every time he turns around there's somebody else with their right. hand in the cookie jar right yeah, yeah. coach why eating so many of these as they go and stuff one in their mouth as well no it's it's just you know it just People know what that what a routine does, but few people have the discipline to do it day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And he does. And if, you know, it, it works for him, and so he's going to keep doing it. Speaking of discipline, we went out of our booth here. This is probably the best spread I've ever seen in any stadium. Correct. Talking about the candy, yeah, cookie table with about 15 different options. Rocky, you showed some discipline just, staying away, man. I was I, impressed. I, was, I thought that's where you were going with that, yes. I did some discipline. I didn't, I won the gelato cup, but I passed. Hey, good punt as Downs will field it at his 20. Trying to make something happen, and will be forced out of bounds as soon as he crosses the 25. Alabama is up big on senior day. Still plenty of time to play here in the fourth. Nothing like game day in Alabama. Stopping into Rama Jamas. Alabama with a 59 to 10 lead over Chattanooga. Some good eating in there, I bet. So Justice Haynes is now the running back for Alabama. Haynes showing some patience, trying to follow his blockers. Picks up four there on first down. It was interesting when we talked to Tommy Reese about Haynes, just asking about their young running back, what they like, what they expect. He said he is one of the best natural runners that you can expect, and he is going to be a superstar for Alabama. And that's high praise, right? Because they've hit a lot of pretty good natural running backs around here. For him to say that about the freshman says a lot. Second and six, they give it back to him. Took two Chattanooga players to bring him down as he crossed the 30. It looked like he missed block there by the tight end, didn't seal that guy out and give him that hole where he could do something with it. But uh, yeah, he's an impressive young man. Good size, compact body, strong. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen on third and six. Simpson out of the shotgun. Throwing and completing it to Cole Adams, but he's going to be short of the marker, about two yards short. Yeah, just broke that route off about a yard short of the sticks. I would like to see that.
So James Burnham is on to punt for Alabama. As Jamoy Mays is the deep man. Waiting for it at his own 20. Burnham a high punt. And fair catch is called for and caught. As Chattanooga will take over. Well, the big adjustment in this game was special teams for Alabama. Kool-Aid McKinstry, this was in the first quarter. And he had a, just a muff punt there. Maybe trying to do a little too much, didn't secure the ball. So what normally happens on a Nick Saban coach team is he's going to ask you why you did that. You're saying, well, okay, coach, I'll get it next time. Well, there, maybe there is no next time because he put Caleb Downs in. And then, oh, maybe a Wally Pip situation here, Caleb Downs takes that opportunity and takes it to the house. Flipping around, moving, spinning, and impressive player making another impressive play. So Chris Houston now in there running back for Chattanooga gets the carry there. That hole closed quickly. A nice job on defense by Sean Murphy to get in there and bring down the running back. Yeah, and we are seeing a lot of different guys in the game now on both sides of the ball, especially defensively here. But again, this is what's good. Sean Murphy, redshirt freshman. And really I had one tackle on the season coming in here. He gets an opportunity. And we talked about the difference in playing a team from the FCS in the beginning of the season versus the end of the season. And this is beneficiary, especially for Alabama, because you get so many quality reps with yep. guys who've gotten a chance to be on the sideline and learn all season long. Second and eight. Houston trying to reverse course, but goes back into the heart of the Alabama D. And it also just speaks to their re recruiting and depth because they have the players they can put backups in and still not let a game get out of hand. You know what I mean? Some, some coaches are reluctant to do that because they're worried after their frontline guy, there's a big drop off. And I'll tell you guys, the starters that are out here on the bench still engaged on the sideline, talking to the younger guys who are getting reps, cheering them on, you know, talking through what they saw on the field when they came off. You can tell how close this team is. That's a good point, Don. Yeah, the guys are still engaged. They're not sitting on the bench with shoulder pads off and yucking it up out there. They're still watching their teammates and trying to help out wherever they can. Third and seven. Hand off again is to Houston. Mm. And that defense stays strong. A loss of one on third down. Yeah. That's where Houston was trying to get the edge, but then there was no edge. Second good. unit for Alabama, the defense, they're showing some swagger out there. Oh, no, that was good. Really good job. All right, here he is again. Caleb Downs, the punt returner. He's already returned one today. And as a defensive player, I mean, a lot of people are whispering the name Minka Fitzpatrick around here. They're that type of special player, even as, as a freshman. And now we're seeing what he can do on, def on uh, special teams. We do have a penalty flag before the snap. False start on the offense, number 27. That's a five-yard penalty where it remains fourth down. So, and that Minka Fitzpatrick reference, Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, actually threw that one out. And he wasn't saying he's the Minka Fitzpatrick, you know, all-American guy in the NFL. He's where Minka Fitzpatrick was when he was a freshman. Right. And he's seeing similar traits. And if he stays on this path, then Caleb Downs can be one of the greats. And that's what Steele said. He said, you know, Caleb Downs on day one looked like he was a junior out there, right? Like he'd been playing in a while. And he was, was a true freshman making his first time appearing on the field. So that level of understanding and command of the game. More penalty flags. False start on the offense, number five. It's a five-yard penalty where it remains fifth down. So Chattanooga going the wrong way, which mm. means Caleb Downs might have a chance to return this one. I'd, I'd kick this ball <laughs> near the sideline here from Chattanooga. A low wobbly kick, and Downs lets it bounce in front of him. They will check up at the 45. <laughs> Alabama just lifting Chattanooga to another level. <laughs> this is what the FBS is like. Welcome back. Alabama now using their third quarterback of the day, Dylan Lonergan. 
getting ready for his first college snap. True freshman, huh? Hands it off to Young. And this is another guy they're very high on. Tommy Reese said, we don't know if he's going to get in the game, but we would love to see Lonergan, if at all possible. And with this lead, the freshman getting some reps. It, it makes sense. It, it's, it's well played, well done by this Alabama coaching staff. Obviously getting up by 49 points helps. But yeah, get everybody you can some reps. Lonergan getting set for his first college throw, and he completes it to Danny wow. Lewis, the tight end. All right, freshman. Yeah, tight window throw. On the money, right as the tight end is coming out of his break. That's how you draw it up. Good, good timing throw. You want to throw this ball, not when the receiver is open, but before he gets open. Bang, right there. It's well covered, but perfectly thrown ball on time. Wins the day. So into Chattanooga territory on third and four. There's a keeper. Lonergan puts his head down, and he's got enough for the first down. How about the toughness from the freshman? That's going to feel so good for him, right? True freshman. Have a nice throw, getting your confidence going, and then just get in there and mix it up a little bit. Get a little contact. And if you're going to play quarterback at Alabama, you're, you're going to have to run the ball a little bit and put it in your own hands, so it's good to get that feel. So first down from the Chattanooga 43. Throw completes again. Lonergan is two for two. He finds Cole Adams for a gain of seven. A little out route at six to ten is, is working. He got that one down. You know he's got to be feeling some nerves, right? His first oh, yeah. college snap at home inside Bryant Denny, but he has been looking pretty smooth so far. Second and three. Haynes get the carry. And he'll have enough to move the sticks for a first down. I mean, when you look at the youth on this team, the future is always bright. But we're talking potential superstars who yeah. are getting some key snaps right now for Alabama. Alabama knows how to recruit. I mean, it, it's, a lot of it is, of course, Nick Saban. And look, I mean, his pitch is, look, come here. We'll develop you. We win national titles. All of our guys, a lot of them go to the league. You come in here and you trust our process. It'll work. Haynes bounces it to the outside. Touchdown, Bama. A 33-yard scamper, and you see why they love Justice Haynes. He's got big play potential every time he touches it. His second touchdown of the game. Take another look. And yeah, pull two guys from the right to the left, and then just good job reading the blocks, find the daylight, and then the speed. Once you get that edge, do you have the speed to get it down the sideline? And that's it. Good job with the fancy footwork as well. Five rushing touchdowns for Alabama today. Should have been six. Or, well, no, I'm sorry. Well, the one didn't count. <laughs> Reichard continues to add to his all-time total. It is now 66 to 10, Alabama on top. And Reichard, one point behind Dixon to tie him for number two all-time, and just nine points behind tying Keenan Reynolds for number one. It's incredible. It's just a good example of consistency that's what you got to do right as a player certainly as a kicker consistency can you do it game in game out that man's done it let's take a look at today's week 13 sec network college football lineup for eastern three central new mexico state takes on auburn that's a sneaky good yeah. game diego pavia quarterback for new mexico state he can sling it with the best of them a former wrestler he likes to get dirty that could be a fun matchup then Kentucky faces South Carolina in our SEC Saturday night matchup. 
All games are also available on the ESPN app. We should ask Don, how do you feel about your Auburn Tigers there, Don, about New Mexico State and Auburn moving forward? Don is currently running with security behind her. I see her. So it's okay. We'll give her a pass right now. <laughs> she had to she, cut through. She's tracking down a story. She's behind the Alabama sideline, getting through all the maze. A short kick. Fielded at the 10 by Mays. He is tackled, brought down as soon as he crosses the 25. I promise I wasn't avoiding the question, boys. <laughs> <laughs> she was picking up and putting him down there, moving from all one side of the field to the next. That was impressive, Don. You may be tired just looking at it. Yeah, I'll be hurting in the morning. Don't worry. <laughs> Don, a proud graduate of. Why are you pointing this out? Are you trying to blow my Twitter feed up right yes. now? So we yes, were just, we, we were are. just mentioning the Auburn New Mexico State game coming up next, and I know you might have a connection to that game. I might, but I will not say what I want to say because I am on this <laughs> sideline. What did Coach Steele say, Davenport? What are you doing on the wrong side oh, of the state? Oh yeah. <laughs> Up ended. A gain of two. Obviously, you look at the score, you're like, whoa, Alabama's putting it on Chattanooga. But Chattanooga had some flashes today to show you why they're one of the better teams in the FCS. They, they did. They started off really, really slow. As, as we've discussed, Luke Schomburg thrown into action here late in the week, making his first start and, and you know, noticeably unsettled early on. But they settled in there in the second quarter. Got some great running by Geno Applebear. That really helped. Under three minutes to play here in the fourth. Second and eight coming up for the Mox. Davis again on the carry. And he picks up two. Chattanooga scored a touchdown their last drive of the first half. And then they scored a field goal their first drive of the second half. That's all the scoring Chattanooga did today. But for them, it's about getting healthy. They want their starting quarterback, Chase Artapias, to become healthy for their playoff run in the FCFs. And knock on wood, it looks like I mean, so far today they're going to get out of here healthy and you know, they're able to work on some things and gain some confidence a little bit here and there and come in and play a game at Bryant-Denny Stadium and you know, that FCS playoffs, which is always fun. That'll get started here soon. Third and six, Davis again. And he'll be brought down short. Another good stop by Sean Murphy. Well, as the clock continues to tick, certainly want to remember the seniors here for Alabama. 23 seniors honored before the game. Part of this class that won that 2020 national championship here at Alabama. You remember your senior day at, at Notre Dame, what I, that was like? I, I do. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, it's it's one of those things I remember just thinking, God, it went so fast. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, every one of these seniors on Alabama's team is saying the exact same thing. You're thinking, oh, four years, five years. It's not a lot of time, and a lot goes on and goes fast. Well, Chattanooga's defensive coordinator, Lorenzo Ward, he knows what it's like to play here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Played for Alabama defensive back from 1986 to 1990. Look at that old school pose right there. Young Lorenzo Ward wearing that 18. Yeah, he knows all about playing this stadium. He said, you know, the, the stadium has been built up a little bit more since then I played. Is he putting one on Tim Brown there, my guy? All right. Lorenzo Ward, good player, good coach. Coach a few plays South Carolina for a little bit, and he has a home now here in Chattanooga. He knows how special it is to come inside Bryant Denny Stadium. How special these fans are. I mean, let's be real. I know you're a Notre Dame guy. You're biased. <laughs> there is not a fan base like Alabama I in the entire disagree. country. I ain't gonna disagree. It's it, it's a special thing here at Alabama. Love these fans. It's been fun to call this game and see it in person here today. So victory formation for Alabama. As Nick Saban 
and congratulate his seniors. 23 seniors honored before the game. And look what they've done. 47 and it's five amazing. record. Two SEC titles, national title. I mean, what an experience these seniors have had in their time here at Alabama. A final knee by Dylan Lonergan. And that'll do it. On senior day, Alabama, they win it big. 66 to 10 over Chattanooga. And for Nick Saban, obviously he'll find some things that he wants to clean up, but for the most part, Alabama, they came ready to play no matter who the opponent was. I, I don't think you can be too displeased. There's a lot of top-notch teams that would have come in here and just looked off kilter a little bit. Not, not this Alabama team, not a, how they're playing at this point in the season. All right, we send it down to Don, who has Nick Saban. I do, Coach. You said this week, complacency kills momentum. How would you rate your team's response today? I think they responded well. I think they played well in the game. Um, these are the kind of games that you know, guys cannot have the right mental uh, intensity to go play and build the kind of momentum that you want. But I think we did that today. We did a great job on offense. Had a couple lapses on defense, but, you know, we played well overall. You mentioned offense. This guy standing next to you, Jalen Milrow, just dealing today. What did you like about his performance? Well, he played great. Great start. I think he'd be like 10 for 10 to start with or something and uh, made some really big plays. But, you know, we kind of knew what we were going to do and did a great job of executing and take advantage of some of those explosive plays. You also got to see some younger guys in this game, including two of your younger quarterbacks. What did those guys show you? Well, we got to play a lot of players today. You know, a lot of guys do a great job. They don't get much reinforcement sometimes in terms of playing time so it was good to get a lot of guys an opportunity to play today coach congratulations good luck next week thank you, thank you. all right Jalen you want to come chat what a game for you 197 yards three touchdowns what keyed those numbers for you today um, biggest thing that we talked about just being point guard with the football and then also doing doing your job I think that's very key for anybody on offense but on defense no matter what it's all about doing your job um, and then you got to apply Coach Reese. Coach Reese called it, dialed up a good game plan. All I did was just try to do a, be a point guard of the ball. You know, we talked about the transition of this offense, of you as a quarterback. What does a game like this, where you can come out and put up those numbers, do for this offense moving forward? We got to see everything the opportunity. Um, opportunity to grow and also get a chemistry together as an offense. Um, we're steadily growing. We're not a finished product, but we're, still, we're steadily building. You look Next week, it's rivalry week, a game against Auburn. What can you pull from this one as you look to Auburn next week? Biggest thing we got to do is focus on the task at hand, um, be where our feet are, and then we'll get to the, the game at Auburn. Coach Saban would be proud of that response, Jelly. Guess what? Roll time! <laughs> there you go. Congratulations, guys. Oh, awesome stuff. Good I mean, <laughs> Great what a poised young man. Jalen Milrow was sat down early in the season, the way he's responded, and, and the way you hear from him talking about how he doesn't feel like he has to make plays, he can just be the point guard, the facilitator now in this offense. When you're challenged in life, you can do two things. You go down in the dumps and say, I don't have any confidence, no one believes me, or you can respond. Jalen Milrow has responded, playing with a ton of confidence. This offense is now designed to help him do what he does best. He's spreading the ball around. I think he's advanced in his passing capabilities big time here. And if you want to make a big run in today's college football, your trigger man has got to be playing well. He's playing lights out right now. For Alabama, the third game this season where they've rushed for five or more touchdowns in a game. They're actually the only team in the SEC with more than one of those games, showing you they have multiple ways to get it done. And what a treat. My first trip here to Bryant-Denny Stadium, and it did not disappoint. Alabama fans, Thank you for showing up. This has been a fun week here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, this has been great to see this program up close here. Uh, I'm a believer in everything Alabama does and how they're, they're, you know, their approach, how they do things, and just how well this football team is playing right now is impressive. On Senior Day, where they honored 23 seniors, and they got the younger guys a chance to get in on the action. Alabama wins it big. Our final, 66 to 10 over Chattanooga. For my partner, Rocky Boyman, Don Davenport on the field, our outstanding crew here in Tuscaloosa. I'm John Trippin saying so long. Congratulations to the seniors getting a win on their final time here at Bryant-Denny Stadium.